Hello, welcome to SmartBird 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. In our last segment, we talked about how to build a smart notebook lesson, and we got through halfway through pretty much of that particular video series. Now, let's go ahead and look back and go back to a part two and continue building that lesson within Smart Notebook. Now, as you can recall, in our very first series, we talked about how to add a title page, how to insert a picture, how to use the word generator, and also how to add a video and link it to a picture, and also how to add some blank line paper that I can go ahead and write with on the smart board. So let's go take a look back at our smart board and our smart notebook file that we're building and continue on. So as I go back to my computer screen, you can see that these are all the files that I wouldn't have been created so far. Now, the one thing I, I want to show you though is before we continue on is how to save our file. We don't want to be building our files and also we have a computer error or we just close our file and we don't save it and then it's gone forever. So we need to save all of our work that we're doing. So I'm going to click on File and I'm going to go to Save As. And as a habit in our trainings, we always uh, tell our students to go ahead and save it to the desktop because we are different levels of, of, of computer users that we, that we are training. But if you have, want to put it in my documents, that's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and choose today the desktop. I'm going to call this a weekend of the window. And let me go ahead and blow that up just so you can see it a little bit better. As I know on the computer screen, sometimes it doesn't show up very well. So notice here, I'm saving it to my desktop right there. I'm going to close that up there. And I went ahead and, whoop, too large there. And a weekend of window is a file name that I'm going to go ahead and use. And I'm going to click on save here in just a moment. And save. And so now I've, I've saved my document. It's going to preserve it. I don't have to worry about losing it anymore. So let's continue on and add another page within smart, our Smart Notebook lesson. So as you can see, Smart Notebook has labeled them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'm going to click on 6 right now. And there's another thing that's really neat is as we're telling stories and teaching students about, how, uh, about, about stories, we sometimes want to have them list the order of things that happen within the story. And so Smart Notebook and the Smart Lesson Activity Toolkit has a great tool for that, and it's called the Sentence Arrangement. So I'm going to click on my gallery. Let's go ahead and find that particular piece. And I'm going to type in Sentence. I think it's called Arrangement. do my search there and no let me see the title one thing I've noticed about uh, smart notebook is when you keep it as simple as you can it's a lot easier so it's interactive multimedia and there it is a blue sentence arrangement and it's going to simply drag that out right there and basically as you're telling the story and you want to edit this particular piece you want to click on the edit button that's right there so I'm going to go to blow that up so you can see that I want to click on the edit button here and that's going to open up the editor so I can go ahead and type in all the things that, that happened first. So I'm going to click on edit. And I can type in everything that happened first. But for the sake of our show, I'm going to type in first, second, and so forth, and third. Okay. As you can tell, you can, always, you can go down to eight items that are right there listed. And of course, I want to put a solve button that's there. I really don't want to put a password protection at my particular point if I'm working with uh, the younger kids at this particular point. So once I do that, I'm going to click OK. And now I have my sentence arrangement here. So if I want to notice it's out of arrangement, I want to put the first first. So I'm simply going to take the blue one and drag it on top of the first one, and it moves it down. And you can go and see how this particular item that works. Now, one thing I'm going to let you know, if you want to reset it, so you have to come back and have other students go and do that. You can click on reset. If you want them to check your answers, you can go to check and it puts a, of course, a check mark or X on if you got it correct or incorrect. Or you can click on solve and it solves all the problems for the students at that particular point. One thing I'm going to mention to you though, if I can get my page to show up here, is notice I can barely see it on my screen, but I have a drop down menu. And if I can blow that down. No, I really can't. Let me see if I can move this down here a little bit. There it is. Notice my object that I put there. I can move it around. And, and so that can kind of really throw students off from time to time. So whenever you put an object and you don't want it to move at all, we want to go to that drop down menu in the editor 
And when I go to that drop down menu, I'm going to choose locking and I'm going to choose lock in place. And so we blow that up so you can kind of see that whole hierarchy of how that works. So I went to the drop down menu from here. And for the drop down menu, I chose locking. From locking, I went to lock in place. And so now when you go and try to click on that document or try to move it, that little object, it's not going to move at all. So let me go ahead and escape that. I'm going to go back down and choose this order again, lock in place. So now notice here, my, I don't get those double arrows that allows me to go ahead and to move it. So that particular feature is there, so I can do a sentence order on that. Now once I have this particular piece set up here, I'm going to go ahead and choose I'm going to add another piece to another page. So I have my seven here. I'm going to click on that. And one thing I might want to do is, is in the two story, I have two characters, Wendell and Sophie. And so if I, let's say I want to identify the different character traits of those particular characters. Uh, there's something called the vortex that I want to go ahead and use. And that allows us to, to uh, categorize Wendell and Sophie into different categories and different traits that they have. So again, I'm going to go to my gallery. I'm going to choose in my search, I'm going to look for vortex. And this will really get your kids, especially at the end of the day, and search for vortex and interactive multimedia. I'm going to go for the blue one here and I'm going to drag and drop it. And there it is. It's loading up. And I'm going to move it down just a tad. And again, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit first. Okay. And so my first vortex, I'm going to call that Wendell. And the next one called Sophie. And so now on label one, I know that uh, Wendell was mean. Typing not very well today. He was mean, uh, very self-centered. And let me put a hyphen there. For Sophie, we know that she was very nice, uh, very friendly. And so once I have my, my choices here, notice in the upper right hand corner, I want the, ver the vertices to go ahead and rotate. So that really gets your kids' attention. And I'm going to click OK. And notice now that they they're, have Wendell here and Sophie and the vertices are rotating. But again, I'm going to go ahead and lock my object in place. And so here, we move my page on so you can see a little bit better, we have all these different pieces that categorize the, our characters. So if I choose nice for Wendell, watch what happens. It spits it out, knowing that Wendell was not nice, but Wendell we do know is very self-centered, and when I put that on there, it kind of goes away, letting you know that was the correct answer. So again, that's a kind of a neat feature that you can use within Smart Notebook of these galleries that are available to us. Now, again, I might, I might want to add more pages to my particular piece here. But one thing I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to go back to my gallery. I'm going to add another page here. I'm going to go back to my gallery, and I'm going to put a, a handout that I, I want to put into my attachments. Or Let me go back up here. I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. I wanted to click on my attachments tab here. And on my attachments tab, I wanted to put some notes that I had for Wendell, maybe some teaching notes that I had found on the internet or my own personal notes that I have created. And so I'm going to click on insert. And I'm going to insert a copy of a file. Of course, I'm going to go to Wendell. And I'm going to go to Wendell Notes and open that up there. So that way, whatever I want to open up this particular file, I need to refer back to it. I can open it up, and there I have my little window notes that I have there. Or another way you could use our, our attachments features, let's say I have some handouts or worksheets I want to give to my students, but I want to practice it with it on the smart board before I give it to my kids or maybe do it at the same time. So again, I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to look for some handouts that I have. And of course, I have a mouse coloring pages, so I'm going to click on open. There we go. And then I also have another one called, another Word document, I believe it is. Let's see what I have here. I also have a Wendell handwriting document so they can practice their handwriting with Wendell. And insert another copy of that. And I also have 
a worry writing. Maybe I want to write, have a little, a little handout with them. Click on that and open. And so now all these items are with me anytime that I'm teaching. I don't have to go and search them on my laptop anymore or my desktop. They're all going to be at my fingertips as I'm presenting my particular pieces. Now what's really neat is I have this mouse coloring pages, pages here. When I click on that, here's my coloring pages. And of course, if my smart ink that's up here in my very top corner, I can now go and choose a pen and color that if I wanted to. But what's really neat though is in Smart Notebook 11, they have a feature called crowns, another type of pen. And I'd rather use that crown piece within my Smart Notebook. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go back to my coloring pages and I want to insert that page as PDF into my Smart Notebook file. So how do I go and do that? The easiest way is you want to use a feature called Print to Smart Notebook. So I'm going to click on my Printer tab up here. And when I do, I have my Printer option that comes up. And let me blow this up so you can see this a little bit better. Notice my, one of my choices for my printer is Smart Notebook Print Capture. I'm going to go and choose that printer and it's going to print to Smart Notebook. So let me go ahead and minimize this screen here. I'm going to choose Smart Print Capture. I'm going to click OK. And let's see where it put it. It's opening up, it's opening up another Smart Notebook file. And that's OK. I'm going to minimize that. All right. And it should be within my pages here. Let's see. There it is, Smart. Uh, I didn't show it there. Let me close that one up. And there it is. It put it within Smart Notebook. And so I'm going to go ahead and go to the drop down menu. I'm going to lock that particular piece, lock in place. And so now when I'm working with this handout with my students, I can go to my crowns here and choose a crown. I'm going to choose this green one. And now I can go ahead and mark it up using a different crown for my piece. So I can demonstrate how to color that with my students. Well, this pretty much wraps up today's show on how to use or how to create a Smart Notebook lesson. Again, we use a lot of tools from our Lesson Activity Toolkit, such as the, the vertices, the, um, I can't remember what other one we use. Go back to my paper over here. And we use vertices and a sentence arrangement. And we also showed you how to print a Smart Notebook that we could add any kind of Smart Notebook, any kind of file into Smart Notebook. And again, I'll, in another video series, I'll, I'll discuss more and show you more about that Print to Smart Notebook feature. I hope you liked today's show and learned a lot, and we'll come back for some more shows. Have a good day.